good evening, everybody. Welcome to this Sunday evening meeting of the Lighthouse Baptist Church. Let's all take a hymn book and stand together this evening and turn to hymn number 327. That's 327. Hymn 327. I'm pressing on the upward way. 327. Let's sing it out this evening. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. By faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher has no desire to stay, where doubts arise and fears dismay, though some may dwell where these abound, my prayer my aim is higher ground, Lord lift me up and let me stand, by faith on heaven's table land, a higher play that I have found, Lord plant my feet on higher ground, I want to live above the world. Though Satan's darts at me are hurled, for faith has caught the joyful sound, the song of saints on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand, by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to scale the utmost high and catch a gleam of glory bright. But still I'll pray till heaven I found. Lord, lead me on to higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. By faith on heaven's table land, a higher play that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Amen. Thank you for being here this evening and uh, hope you had a good day, especially all the mothers. We hope you had a good day. I had a good Mother's Day, even though I wasn't a mother, but uh, I had a good day. And uh, so uh, whew, I ate and ate and ate this afternoon. Uh, <laughs> uh, Miss Sue fed me well today. Uh, let's see, my first go round, I won't tell you all I had, but it was a plate full. And then second go round was about three quarters of the way full. And then third round was about a quarter of the way full. Then my dessert plate had to go back twice as well. So I am. I may just take a nap, <laughs> let Brother Derek preach tonight, but anyway, uh, we, I am full, had a wonderful day of eating, hope you had a good day today, and then got about a 10, 15 minute power nap in my recliner, that was a blessing, and uh, so then came back tonight, uh, but anyway, glad you're here today, I do remember Brother Raji is not feeling well, and uh, Brother Bill is not feeling well, uh, Miss Shannon and uh, her husband are, I believe in Ohio, uh, her mother-in-law passed away, so let's remember those three for sure, uh, because that's not why they're not here. And there's some, I think there's some others traveling uh, and out of town vacationing and so forth. So let's go to the Lord in prayer and we'll continue service. Lord Jesus, thank you for this day and thank you for the opportunity we have to serve you. Lord, thank you for a wonderful morning you gave us. Uh, Lord, a house full of people, we appreciate that. And Lord, thank you for blessing there. Uh, and Lord, thank you for all the moms. We ask you to bless them in a special way on their day to day. Uh, and Lord, we do ask you to be with Brother Raji, touch his body, give him strength, and Brother Bill as well. Uh, Lord, I just ask you to bring them back, Lord, and give them strength in their bodies, Lord, and heal them. And Lord, we do ask you to be with uh, Shannon uh, and her family, Lord, as they're away at the funeral. Lord, we just ask you to comfort them in only the way you can. Uh, and Lord, if it be your will, work in this situation uh, and, and maybe save her husband through this. And Lord, I just ask you to have your will and way uh, in the service tonight, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you can be seated. And uh, again, Brother Roger's not here. He usually does the announcements, so I'll try to do them. Uh, this morning you got a bulletin, and uh, the next thing coming up, uh, of course, is Wednesday night service, and we'll uh, have a Wednesday night service. Then we have on May 27th, soul winning, and uh, had a good turnout yesterday with people coming and going and knocking doors, passing out tracts, giving out church invitations, had, had one saved, uh, and that was a blessing. thing. And uh, then we have uh, Brother Jackson's coming on the 21st, and uh, he will be with us all day. Uh, him and his wife will be here all day. Uh, but we'll have him speak on Sunday night, so uh, tr try to come back on Sunday night uh, as well, Help ha have a good crowd there for him to preach to. And uh, then we have the youth rally coming up on the 26th, and uh, we, uh, a new, we have at least five churches that are going to participate in that. Uh, sounds like the Lord's going to bless us with a good turnout there. 
speak to the teenagers, and then uh, in June coming up, just so you'll know how to plan, have a church work day on the 3rd, and uh, that's for fellows and ladies, uh, and, and we'll just come and spruce up uh, the church flower beds and, uh, and things like that, and uh, do some organization and so forth. Uh, and then we have a soul winning on the 10th <coughs> again, and then on that day is a church picnic, church-wide picnic, so that's for any member, any visitor. Uh, anybody that has friends or relatives or co-workers or neighbors that you would like to invite, uh, we will feed them and help them have a good time of fellowship uh, in, hopeful <laughs> that they might come and visit the church as well. So a lot of people will come eat uh, with you sooner than they will go to church with you. So take advantage of that. Amen. And uh, we'll, we'll treat them nice and, uh, and hopefully have a good time that day. Uh, and if you're competitive, obviously there'll be things there, um, cornhole, horseshoes, things like that that you can participate in. Uh, and then soul winning on the 24th, uh, but on the 11th as well, I mentioned this, this is not in the bulletin, but uh, we got confirmation from uh, both of our kids and they're bringing our grandkids to see us. Uh, the kids can be here as well, but uh, we, we're gonna enjoy uh, those six grandkids that they're coming. And uh, so uh, all of our family, the Lord's blessed with the exception of me, uh, as far as singing and playing, uh, they can sing and they can play anything. I do good to play the radio and uh, mess up on that. Uh, but anyway, we'll sing uh, Sunday morning and Sunday night, and uh, since I have two boys, we'll let them, one of them preach Sunday morning, one of them preach Sunday night. Uh, and then August 8th, we have a preacher's fellowship that we're going to host on, uh, uh, on that Tuesday morning from 8 to 12, and so I've been to two of them. They've been, they've been wonderful, uh, good times of fellowship, preaching, things like that. So anyway, that's a lot of announcements, and praise the Lord, we got things going on, and uh, uh, let's just be involved in as many of them as we can. So Brother Derek? Let's turn him 229. That's 229. Him 229. I have a song I love to sing since I have been redeemed. Him 229. Let's sing together. I have a song I love to sing since I have been redeemed. Of my Redeemer, Savior, King, since I have been redeemed. Since I seated. <clears throat> and if, <clears throat> if you didn't get one of the books this morning we gave out to the ladies, we do still have some, so just see me and I'll get you one. And let's turn to Matthew 16. Matthew 16. been good to have 
Brother Derek's parents and grandmother with us all day today and appreciate them being here. We have some first time visitors here tonight. Uh, and so make sure you introduce yourself to them, make them feel welcome and so forth. And I do know uh, the friends that we have that are moving up here from Florida. I guess we have two friends that will admit it. Uh, anyway, they're, they're moving up and they're going to join on the 28th. Uh, they're closing on the 26th and they'll join the church on the 28th. Uh, the couple that's been coming, I guess five weeks in a row now that sit on the back back there, they told me this morning that they want to join. And so they're going to join that day as well, make it official and so forth. And then I do know there's, there's two or three other families that uh, have not joined yet or whatever, and maybe we can make a, a big day of it. Just all of us just line up up here because I think that's why some haven't joined. They don't want to be the only ones down here. And I don't want to stand down and everybody look at me like that. So I think we'll just make a big day. Everybody can come join on the same day. And so on the 28th, and uh, anyway, so I'll uh, remind us of that and so forth. But anyway, we're glad you're here this evening. And a wonderful day the Lord's given us. And uh, I enjoyed preaching this morning. Hope you enjoyed it uh, and things like that. But tonight uh, we're going to talk about, I guess, the title of my sermon. I gave it to Brother Todd. It's kind of lengthy. Uh, but it says here, the types of people that you can count on to help build a church. The types of people that you can count on to help build a church. And that's, um, that's our goal. Uh, you know, not just because I'm the pastor, but because I'm a Christian. Uh, that's, that's what we're supposed to do is to... Build, build the church and expand, uh, and we're supposed to grow and, and things like that. So that's what we're going to look at tonight. And before we read the, um, uh, I guess, the scripture here, there's, I guess, two other examples I'm going to use. Noah was told to build something. All right? Noah was told to build the ark, and he was given the dimensions, and he was given all the things that, how to do it. And this is what I want you to do. And Noah was like, yes, sir. And then Solomon uh, he was supposed to build the temple, uh, and I'm sure, uh, uh, you know, as much as I do not like moving, I, I, I still are, has not totally unpacked yet, and uh, we've been here for three and a half months, okay? So it's, it's getting there, and, uh, you know, I, I get the twitches if stuff, you know, I, I, when I'm laying there in the bed, if I know that there's stuff that's not in its place, it bothers me a little bit, okay? And so uh, the last couple of nights I've been sleeping in my own bed, for the first time in a couple months, and, uh, and I like that, and uh, it being done helps me. And so Solomon, uh, I don't know, I mean, I, I do know this, but you, and you probably know this as well, they had been putting the, basically a big huge tent up to have church, taking it down, putting it up, taking it down, putting it up, taking it down. I mean, for years, around and around the circles, and they said that they went around and around circles for 40 years putting that thing up and down, up and down, and it was like a, what, a three and a half mile journey. Uh, you would have thought they would have started seeing the same holes uh, if they were going around putting that big old tent up. But they, Solomon was able, he was going to be able to build the temple and not have to go up and down, up and down with, with the church, uh, you know, the tent, the tabernacle, and so forth. And so uh, Noah was told to build something, Solomon was told to build something, and then we're told to build something, and that's the church. And we're going to look at that tonight. So let's read the scripture and we'll have a word of prayer. Matthew 16, verse 13 through 18. Matthew 16, 13 through 18, it says here, When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And it says here, And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist. And I, I think this is an awesome verse. Uh, as, you know, as clean, pure, and righteous as Jesus was, uh, for them to say that some think you're John the Baptist, that means John the Baptist was a pretty good Christian. <laughs> Uh, you know, pretty good, uh, you know, representative of what the Lord wanted him to do. And then it says, and some say Elias, and others Jeremiah, and it says here, and or one of the prophets. In verse 15, it says, he said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, and he was always the first one to run off at the mouth, you know, I'll never betray you, though they slay me, or if they kill me, I'm, I got your back, things like that. And he was the one that walked on the water and so forth. So here, here he is saying, you know, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed that uh, unto thee, but my father, which is in heaven. And so he was like, yes, Peter, you're right. Uh, the other times he kind of got on to him a little bit, put your sword away, Peter. And he put the guy's ear back on and 
calm down. It's all right. This is, this is God's will. And you know, when, out in the boat, you know, if that's you out there, Jesus bid me to come. Come on, Peter. And uh, Peter still holds the record for walking on the water. So uh, he got to do that and so forth. And this time he's like, you're right, Peter. All right. And, uh, and a lot of people take this verse out of context and they say that, you know, the, the church is built on Peter and he was the first pope and he, you know, this, that, and that. No, no, no. If, if he said that, if that would have been true, he'd have said upon that rock and he would have pointed at Peter. But he said upon this rock and he was talking about himself. And of course, we know the Bible says that he's the chief cornerstone uh, of the church. Peter's not. Uh, and, you know, if you do any study on this, obviously Peter translates into pebble and uh, Jesus translates into the stone that, that, that the builders rejected and so forth. So we see here that Jesus came so that there could be a church built. And, of course, he called the disciples out when he was there on earth doing his earthly ministry. And they were a called out assembly. Uh, and then, of course, he met Paul on the road to Damascus. And Paul got saved and Paul started going on his missionary journey and starting this church and starting this church and starting this church. And so the teaching and the preaching and the praying and the going out into the highways and the hedges and doing all that stuff was part of God's plan to build the church. Just like we're going to see here in just a second about the plan to build the ark and the plan to build the tent tabernacle and God had a plan to build a church. So that's what we're going to look at tonight and hopefully uh, we'll see that ourselves in that, uh, in that picture. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for this day. And thank you for the opportunity we have to serve you. Uh, Lord, I hope it's all of our desires to please you, number one. Uh, and then we'll see your plan tonight as we're supposed to be a part <clears throat> of building the church, doing our part to pray and to finance and so forth and do the things uh, that we're supposed to do to build the church. Just like Noah was to build the ark, just like Solomon was to build the temple, you've commanded us to build the church. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we're going to look real quickly that God did not go to Noah and say, hey, build an ark, and just walk away. All right, Noah would have was like, first of all, he would have said, what is an ark? Uh, if you read that in context, it hadn't ever rained before. Uh, definitely, they hadn't ever flooded before. Uh, they didn't have boats. Uh, you know, there was nothing that floated around on the top of the water, things like that. And of course, if you read the description, he tells him how long, uh, how, how long to build it. And if, you know, if you've ever been over to it, there's a replica of it <laughs> within driving distance from here. Blew my mind uh, the first time I ever saw it. I, you know, I, I've heard 300 cubics and all that kind of stuff, but that's huge. All right? It's big, and you're just like, whoa. And he built that, and he didn't have a chainsaw. All right? He didn't have a skill saw. Uh, he didn't have a reciprocating saw. He didn't have a saw. All right? uh, it was right here. This is it. He had hands, and he told him how to build it, and then he gave him instructions on how to put it together. You pitch it within and pitch it without. Uh, I thought he was talking about baseball, uh, but he was talking about that, that goop that they came up with. So it wasn't like liquid nail, all right, or silicone or caulk, but a similar. <laughs> He's like, this is how I want you to put it together so it doesn't leak. And so it was important that he followed the guidelines. And he told him how many rooms to put in it. And of course, if you stand over there and read those little signs, you can be there for hours, all right, as far as how it worked. And uh, you got that many animals in one place, Woo. All right. And so they had ways to get rid of that and to clean and things like that and so forth. And he had his family and they had to have the food and all that stuff. So it was very intricate. It wasn't just, you know, randomly throw some pieces of wood together. No, it was do it this way and do it that way. So he gave him the dimensions. He gave him the directions. And he told him he also not only to give him dimensions and directions, he gave him the duration. He's like, OK, you got to get it done. Because when you get it done, it's going to rain for 40 days and 40 nights, and you're going to be inside of it until it dries up. And so he told him about the duration. And then uh, we see here Solomon, if you read that story. Uh, of course, we mentioned that a little bit about David getting all that stuff together Wednesday night when we were talking about nailing some things down. Uh, David was getting the nails together in the, in the cedars and all the gold and all the things and things like that, getting all the supplies together for his son to build this temple. And then he was given the dimensions and how many rooms it was have, to have in it. And then he was given directions as well to put the furniture uh, in this certain area. And this furniture needs to be used for this. And this piece of furniture needs to be used for that and so forth. And so very intricate details on the, on the temple. So the ark. And of course those people went to the ark and got in it and were safe. And the temple uh, was built. And those people went to the church and went to the temple and got preached the word of God. And of course we have the church today. Just like the ark, just like the temple, 
the church of God is here for us to be saved and to learn the word of God and to serve him in. So just like Noah was given directions and dimensions and uh, duration and things like that, we are as too. We are as well. So we are gave, given the plan to help build the church. Uh, I heard a, a preacher give this illustration. We know the Bible says, if, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men. So again, as a pastor and as a Christian, I want the church to grow. I want the church to be filled. I want the church to be seeing people get saved and people's lives being, uh, you know, turned around for God and things like that and him blessing that. that that's a desire. Uh, but just like Noah, he wanted to be obedient to God and build the ark. Solomon wanted to be obedient to God and build the temple uh, and, and things like that. So this preacher said that his dad was helping or building something. I don't know if it was a house or a barn or an, a, an, an addition or whatever, but he was, he was helping his dad. And he wasn't big enough to drive a nail or he wasn't big enough to saw anything or uh, work any of the equipment, things like that. So he wanted a job to do to help his dad. And, and you know, I remember that putting a tool belt on and you know, I wasn't big enough to put the real nice leather ones that clapped. So I had to have the little cheap one, the little piece of material and you tied it around your waist and it probably went around like three or four times before you had to tie it. All right, nowadays I'd be doing good for it to be able to tie. Uh, but anyway, I remember having that, you know, and I wasn't tall enough for the hammer to go in the little holder. Uh, I'd be tripping on it. Uh, but I wanted to help my dad. I wanted to be right there. And so this young man, he wanted to help his dad. And so the, the dad told him, he said, okay, son, there's a pile of two befores over there. He said, I want you to go load your little wet, red wagon up with two, two befores and you bring them over here to me. Yes, sir. He was helping. And he would stack three or four or five maybe on that little red wagon and he'd pull them over there to the dad and the dad would take stop what he was doing and he'd pick up a two before and he'd look down it and he'd put it in this stack. And he'd pick up another two before and he'd look down it and he'd throw it over there. And I don't know if you've ever done any shopping at Home Depot, but you know, to find a straight board is a miracle. <laughs> so it is hard to do. And so that's what he was looking for to, to build certain things. He wanted good boards, straight that, that wouldn't have a bow in it or didn't, wasn't crooked and things like that. But those crooked ones and uh, the ones that had a bow, he could you know, maybe cut them and use the straight parts for braces and things like that. They could be used. And so he said, now that he was a pastor, he remembered doing that for his dad. And he said, that's kind of like building a church. It's our job to load our little wet, red wagon up and bring as many people as we can. But we can't save anybody. We can't fix anybody. We can't straighten anybody out. We can't do that, but we can bring them. And God can pick them up and say, okay, I want to use this one for a Sunday school teacher. I want to use this one for a deacon. I want to use this one to help in this area, things like that. God can do with them what he wants. It's just our job to load our little wet red wagon up. Say red wagon. I have had a hard time with that. Little red wagon up and bring them in. As many as we can. And so, again, that's how we ought to build a church. What we're going to do in the way of introduction, we're going to look at qualifications for those who want to help. Qualifications. A lot of people, oh, I want to help. Sign me up. Okay, but there's some qualifications. If you want to help, I mean, there's, there's some qualifications. It's kind of like being on a football team. Uh, when, when I was uh, in, I guess, let's say eighth grade, uh, I guess that's junior high, whatever, uh, you know, on Fridays, if you were on the football team, you could wear your jersey to school. And I guess that made you cool, all right? Because everybody wanted that. Well, they wanted to be able to wear their jersey over top of their other clothes because they were fishnet type stuff. Uh, but we could wear them over. On Fridays, we could wear our, our jerseys to school. And everybody, oh, you're on the football team. Oh, oh, and that gave you clout, I guess. And so they want to do that. So again, but they just didn't pass out those jerseys. You actually had to make the football team all right, to be able to have one of those jerseys on Friday, much less play in the game on, uh, you know, the, that night. But we see here, a lot of people want to be on team, but then they find out you have to have, make a certain grade to be on that team. All right, well, you got to have a C average, I think it is. So that disqualified several people. Well, I want to wear one of those jerseys on Friday. Well, let's look at your report card. Ugh. All right, disqualification. Sorry. You can't wear one uh, on Friday because you didn't make the grade. And then they say, okay, if you want to be on the football teams, there's workouts. You got to do six inches till your stomach hurts. Hold your feet tip six inches up, spread them back together, drop them until the coach got tired of whistling. All right, run this many laps, do this many exercises, things like that. Then we'll give you a jersey. Well, I'm too tired. 
That's too hard. <laughs> I'm not in good enough shape to do that. Well, you're not going to be able to wear a jersey on Friday. And then I remember, whoo, right before school started, two a days, my soul. We had to be there at daylight and do all that, go home, eat lunch, take a nap, come back at four, and do that again till dark. Two a day practices. Oh my goodness. So there were some qualifications for me to be able to put that jersey on on Friday and walk around the school campus like, hey, he's on the football team. So same thing here. God's not, he wants us all to be saved. He wants us all to be in part. He wants us to qualify those. We're going to look at four things here in the introduction. Qualifications for those who want to help build a church. Number one, they need to have a desire for the scriptures. Let's go to Psalm 19. Psalm 19. Qualifications for those that want to help to build a church. First of all, they need to have a desire for the scriptures. Just like I had a desire to wear that jersey. I had a desire to be on the team. I had a desire to play. I didn't want to just stand on the sidelines. I wanted to actually play. So I had to have some desires, and that helped me to get qualified. So if I want to help build a church, I need to have a desire for the Scripture. Psalm 19, verses 7 through 14. Uh, let's look at verse 7. It says here, In the law of the Lord, that's talking about the Bible, uh, is perfect, converting the soul. The un incorruptible seed has to be involved for a person to be saved. The Scripture has to be there. The scripture has to be there. The Holy Spirit has to be there germination, new life, new birth, salvation. So it says here, the law is perfect, converting the soul. Uh, and the testimony of the Lord is sure, making the wise simple. And the statutes, again, the Bible, of the Lord are right. Rejoicing the heart when you read it. Hey, I love it. That's awesome. And the commandments of the Lord, again, the Bible is pure. Enlightening the eyes. Ah, oh, I see. <laughs> this is what God meant. This is how we're supposed to do this, this, that, and other. And then verse 9, it says here, And the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. And so, again, sometimes we read the Word of God and it convicts us to get clean. Uh, the judgments of the Lord, again, His words, are true and righteous altogether. And then here's that desire. We need to have a desire for the Scriptures. Verse 10 says this, More to be desired are they, what? The words of God. The commandments, the judgments, the statutes, then gold, yea, then much fine gold, sweeter also than the honeycomb and or the honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them, talking about the words of God, is the servant warned. And in the keeping of them, talking about the words of God, this is a great reward. Uh, and then it says here, Who can understand errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also uh, from presumptuous sins. Uh, let them not have dominion over me, and I shall, uh, I'm sorry, then shall I be, be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgressions. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, uh, my strength and my Redeemer. So we see here the words of God, and it says here that they ought to be desired much more than gold. Uh, again, I, there's, I don't know of anything that I have that I would not give up, give up before I gave this up. Okay? I mean, anything. Uh, if somebody says you can give up your Bible or give up your truck, <laughs> that's an awesome truck. Uh, for a Georgia redneck, that's the creme de la creme out there. You know, I had some rattling ones, <laughs> and you could see the ground as I was driving down the road. I mean, it got me from point A to point B, but it wasn't as nice as that. And then I had kids and had to sell that rattly one. <laughs> and if, you, if those boys want to eat, truck's got to go. And I drove a Ford Tempo for a while. Woo, big redneck man in his Ford Tempo sedan even. All right, four doors, goodness gracious. And so uh, obviously those kids grew up and they got out and they started feeding themselves. <laughs> and I was able to afford to get me a truck. All right, but I'd give that up before I'd give this up. This is much more to be desired. Okay, uh, you know, I got some nice weapons, but I'd give them up before I'd give that up. Uh, I like to eat. Amen, Miss Sue? <laughs> she just kept filling that plate up today. I, I like to eat. I'd give up food before I'd give that Bible up. That's what it's talking about. So we're talking about qualifications. We ought to have a desire for the scriptures. Uh, the law of the Lord. They, the testimony of the Lord, the statutes of the Lord, the commandments of the Lord, judgment of the Lord, they ought to be desired. Uh, number two, not only should we desire the scriptures, we ought to desire it, not despise it. Proverbs 13, 13. Desire it, not despise it. Proverbs 13, 13 says this, Whoso despises the word shall be destroyed. Again, there's people that 
they have a godly mother or a godly grandmother or a godly dad or a godly uncle and they're telling them the scriptures all the time. This is what the Bible says. I don't want to hear it. So they don't desire it. They despise it. You know, I've heard it. I've heard it. I'm tired of it. Just leave me alone with that. And they get to where they despise it. it says, Whoso despises the word shall be destroyed. I'm just trying to help you. I'm just trying to tell you the truth. It says, But they that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. Not only should we desire it uh, and not despise it, we just should desire it and not defer it. Not defer it. In other words, if let's say, you know, my wife tells me I do this all the time, uh, but, you know, preach a toe-stepping sermon. All right, you know, and maybe really get, you know, preach up your pews, you know, or on your pews and things like that and get, you know, maybe even a little bit personal. And so I'm standing at the back and you're going out, you know, nice sermon today, pastor, things like that. And if they would have listened, they would have gotten it. In other words, deferred it. That was, that was a, you know, a pointed sermon, but that wasn't for me. <laughs> that was for Miss So-and-So or Brother So-and-So. They, they really need that. So in other words, just defer it. We're good at that, right? If you have siblings, you're very good at it. Who did that? They did. <laughs> I mean, immediately. <laughs> Throw your sister under the bus faster than you can blink. <laughs> you defer it. Uh, you know, somebody's going to pay for that. They did it. So that's what it's saying here. Desire it. Don't de defer it. Proverbs 13, 12 says this. Hope deferred. Make it the heart sick. We need it. it here, but, when, but whom the desire cometh is a tree of life. So when we come to church, we're supposed to desire the scriptures. So when we come in, we ought to have the heart's desire, Lord. If there be any wicked way in me, right? search me and try me, O Lord. Okay? That's what we're looking for. We don't, let's don't defer it. <laughs> uh, let's don't despise it. Ah, quit telling me that. No, we've got to desire it. Desire the Scriptures. Um, and then it says here, not only desire the Scriptures, we should deny or denial of the system. We're looking at qualifications here for these four people we're going to look at at the end here. Uh, desire the Scriptures. Also, we ought to have a denial of the system. And the system we're talking about is that world system. And we know that there's a world system. The world operates by its system. And it pushes it, sh shoves it down our throats, expects, expects us to just get in line and follow the world system. But the Bible says in 1 John 2, 15, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Uh, so the world system says get as much money as you can get. And, I, and I'm for paying your bills. I'm for making money. I'm for setting it aside. I'm for retirement plans. I'm for all that stuff. But the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. So we don't follow the world system when it comes to money. Uh, the style. This is what's popular. This is what the world says you ought to do. I'm not going to follow that system. Philosophy. Popularity. So we're looking at, for those people that desire the scriptures and that they deny the world system. Number three. This is for Caleb, all right? The duty to the Savior, all right? The duty to the Savior. So not only should we desire the Scriptures, we should deny the world system, but we ought to have a duty to the Savior. Faithfulness. Ezekiel 24, 18 says this, So I spake unto the people in the morning, and at the evening my wife died, and I did in the morning as I was commanded. Ezekiel took his duty seriously. If this is what God wants me to do, the worst thing I can think of that took place in his life, his wife passed away, but in the morning, he's like, I'm going to serve the Savior, and he preached. So, desire the scriptures, qualification of somebody that can help build a church, denial of the world system, the duty to the Savior. Um, and then, uh, it says here, the qualification for these people uh, to build a church, desire the scriptures, denial of the system, duty to the Savior, and then dedication to his service. Dedication to his service. Uh, there's a, an example of dedication in the Bible. I think it was kind of, uh, I guess, maybe a little wrong-handed. Uh, but we know that Jacob wanted to marry Rachel. And he served seven years. And he got married and thought it was Rachel, but it was Leah. Oh, <laughs> all right. And he's like, but I want to marry Rachel. Seven more years. So we see that there's some people in the Bible uh, that take their dedication to his service. Uh, Job was that way. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. He took his dedication to the Savior serious. 
Uh, we ought to take our dedication to the Savior more serious than our job, our hobbies, uh, anything. Uh, then it says, uh, we're going to go to the main outline now. That was the four points of the introduction. Here's the main outline. Uh, types of people that we can count on to help build the church. Roman number one is this. Those that come to church. Those that come to church. That's us. <laughs> we can count on us. Why? Because we're here. Uh, we love our church. Uh, I would come to this church if I lived in this area, even if I wasn't the pastor. Why? Well, I love this church. Okay? I think it's awesome. Uh, I, I enjoy the service. I, I love to hear the singing. When Brother Derek's up here singing and hearing y'all sing, I love that. All right? So I'm going to come. Uh, and I like the fellowship. Uh, standing around, I mean, we turn the lights off and people are still in here talking. And uh, praise the Lord for that. All right? I would come to fellowship. Uh, and so you can count on people that come. Why? Because that's what they're doing. They're showing their love for the Lord, their love for their church, and their love for their, their fellow Christian. Why? Because they're here. Uh, you know, actions speak louder than words. I love my church. But you see them like once a year. <laughs> but if they're here service after service after service, and they say, I love my church. Yeah, I know you do. Why? Because you come. So those that come... I hate to bring the Bible into it, but there's several verses that talk about that. Hebrews 10, 25, not forsaking the assembling. That's what we're doing right now. We did not forsake it. Even though our stomachs were full, our eyes were heavy, we got up and we came to church and we did not forsake the assembling. And I appreciate it. I like it when it's full like this uh, and, and so forth. That, that's a blessing. And, and those that do not forsake the assembling, they love their church. Luke 4, 16 the Lord was a good example in church going. Luke 4, 16 says this, And he, talking about Jesus, came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. So Jesus of Nazareth, obviously, he was reared in, in Nazareth. Luke 4, 16 says here, He came to Nazareth as is, or I'm sorry, as his custom was. He went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day. So we see here, not only not forsaking the assembling shows that we come to church, Jesus says here, as his custom was, uh, it was his custom to go to church every Sabbath day. Uh, and then Acts 2, 41 and 42, it says here, and they that gladly received his word were baptized and the same day were added unto the church about 3,000 souls. In verse 42, it says, and they continued steadfastly. So it, it wasn't like a, you know, woo, I got saved, woo, I got baptized, all right, we'll see you. No, they kept coming. And they continue to come. So, people that you can count on to help build a church is those that come to church. Number two, those that confess their corruption. Those that confess their corruption. A lot of people say, okay, I'm going to come. Why? Because my mom and dad would you know, sm smash me if I didn't come. Uh, so, I don't get a choice. You know, I have a drug problem. My parents drag me to church all the time. They drug me in and out. But anyway, we see here, but we confess our corruption. Uh, 1 John 1, 9, we know that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So that's why we come to church. So we confess our corruption. Because uh, I know, even as the pastor, uh, from last Wednesday to today, I did some things I shouldn't have done. I had some thoughts I shouldn't have had. <laughs> I said some words that I uh, shouldn't have said. I behaved in a way I shouldn't have behaved. So I had to confess my corruption. <laughs> Lord, I'm sorry. I blew that again. My bad. First, uh, Second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and will heal their land. So people that confess their corruption, they can be counted on to help build the church. Isaiah fifty nine two. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid and the whole Babylonian garment. And he knew it was wrong. And winning. God had been blessing. There, there's got to be the children of couldn't bless. So people that you can count on to help build a church, they come to church. And not only do they come to church, they confess their corruption. Number three, they carry their cross. Uh, Matthew 10, 37 through 39. I'll read you a couple of verses. They carry their cross. And this is, t this is difficult. Pretty easy to get up and come to church. And if we'll just have the right mindset, it's pretty easy to confess our corruption. We're sinners, but praise the Lord for His mercy and, and things like that. But this is a tough part. This is a tough part. 
Uh, but if these people, if people will do this, you can count on them to help build the church. Verse 37 says this, He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. This is God speaking. We're supposed to love God more than we love anybody. Uh, he that taketh not up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. So there's sometimes when we build a church that we've got to carry our cross. And it's hard to do. Uh, again, some, you know, some moms out there, you see them. They got a big old huge purse on. They got a baby on the hip. And nowadays they got a cell phone connected to them. And they're going down through their grocery shopping. That's hard to do when they're trying to juggle stuff. Uh, you know, again, it's hard when you know, you're trying to fix something and your kid's on your head. You know, you're trying to, wait just a second. <laughs> it's hard. So same thing here. It's hard to build a church when you've got to carry a cross. But God knows that. And verse 39 says this, He that fi uh, findeth his life shall lose it, but he that loses my, his life for my sake shall find it. So carrying the cross. I've seen, I would consider great church helpers or ch church builders that have lost loved ones. In other words, every time they hear the gospel, they're like, that's right. Preacher, that's right. Anybody here that's lost, I hope they get saved today. But in the back of their mind, they're thinking about their mom or they're thinking about their Aunt Susie <laughs> or their cousin that's lost. And that's tough to carry. But what they say is, uh, I heard a preacher say this. I knew a preacher that was a pastor of church. And again, just like the Bible says, you have to have your house in control if you're going to be a pastor. He did while they were in his home. The one young man went, left the home and went berserk. Nuts. He wasn't right with God, running from God. But the way he looked at it, the way he carried his cross was God. Anytime I come across somebody that's struggling, I'm going to do my best to help them. And you remember that, and you have somebody help my son. That's carrying your cross. So if you have a lost loved one, anytime you knock on somebody's door and you give them the gospel and they get saved, say, God, I did that one for you. Have somebody witness to my lost loved one. That's carrying your cross. Then we see uh, if you have loved ones that are prodigal sons, that's carrying your cross. I don't feel like going to church today because it reminds me that so-and-so's in the far country. In the, in, the, in the hog pen. And it's tough to carry that. But if somebody comes anyway, they come to church, and they confess their corruption, and they carry that cross, you can count on them. That's somebody that will help the church. That's somebody that's got strength. They trust God. And so they're saying, God, I'm doing this. You please do that. And they put it in front of God. I've seen people with health problems. They come anyway. They come to church, they confess their corruption, and it's tough for them to even make it. That's carrying their cross. You can count on that person to help build a cross. I've seen people with disappointments in their life. I wouldn't have chosen this, and I don't understand why God chose this for my life, but I love him, and I'm still coming. That's carrying a cross, and you can count on those people. So how, who's the people we can help count on building the church? Those that come to church, those that confess their corruption, those that carry their cross. Uh, number four, those that clean up their character. Those that clean up their character. 2 Timothy 2.19 says here, Nevertheless, the foundations of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Clean up the character. That's the one you can count on to help build the church. Number five. Here's a good one. And you, I'm sure you figured it out by now. They're all C's, right? Come to church. Confess your corruption. Carry your cross. Clean up your character. Here's one. Con uh, contribute your cash. <laughs> contribute your cash. This morning... The offering plates passed and people were contributing their cash. You know why? Because we have lights. And we have AC that's running right now. Amen? And <laughs> it feels good. All right? Uh, and, and so forth. And we have insurance. And we have trash pickup. And we have people that mow this grass. Uh, and, and we have bills. And we're going to have uh, 
a youth rally at the end of this month that our church is going to sponsor and we're going to have vacation Bible school that, that our church is going to put on and praise the Lord and hopefully we'll have, see lots of young people saved and learn the Bible. Right? But it, it takes money. Uh, and of course we have dreams and uh, aspirations of building another building and having more people on this property, but it takes money. So people that contribute or contribute their cash, you can count on them to help build a church. Got some verses for you. Luke 360, I'm sorry, three, a little bit. Luke 6:38. There we go. Give it and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over shall men give unto your bosom for with the same measure that ye meet what sh with wherewithal it shall be measured to you again. So in other words, basically that verse says, look, if God if you give it, how much ever you give, God's going to bless you more. I've seen people over the years, you know, the missionary comes and and we have faith promise and say we're going to take on another missionary and Okay, we're going to commit this, and I don't have it, but you know, by faith I'm going to commit it. And they commit that amount, and then within a week they get a, a raise at, at, their, at their place of employment. And, or they get a bonus, and God takes care of it. So God washes you, and as much as you give, He's going to give it back. 1 Corinthians 16, 2. Upon the first day of the week, let everyone lay by him in store as God hath prospered him, and that there be no gatherings when I come. So you can count on those people that contribute their cash. Here's another one. People that you can count on to help build the church. Those that canvass their community. Those that canvass their community. Give you some verses. Acts 1.8. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. Here's another one. 1 Corinthians 15.34 Awake to righteousness and sin not for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. We're supposed to get the gospel to our area. Luke 14, 23, And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and, and hedges and compel them that my house may be filled. That's what building the church is. So we're supposed to canvass our community. And lastly, those that contend for the Christian faith. Those that contend for the Christian faith. Jude 3 tells us that earnestly contend for the faith uh, if we say nothing it's just going to get worse and if you look at the shape of our world spiritually even economically politically it's in a mess okay and the way we do it is earnestly contend for the faith i'm not saying go out and get you a picket sign i'm not saying go out and beat up a politician <laughs> i'm not saying but how do we do it how do we contend for the faith again it's through prayer pray and ask god is there any wicked way in me? If there is, forgive me, forget it, forsake it. Then he'll heal your land. Then what do we do? Earnestly contend for the faith. How do we do it? By sharing it. I'm totally against abortion. Okay, it's murder. Okay, all right. So I'm not going to go get his picket sign. I'm not going to go blow up a building. All right, I'm not going to go threaten a doctor. What am I going to do? I'm going to go knock on a door, share the gospel with them, get them saved. Then the Holy Spirit comes inside and lives in them. And so if they ever have that decision to make, the Holy Spirit will guide them. It's not my job. Okay? So that's how you earnestly contend for the faith. So how can we help build the church? Obviously, there's qualifications. And here's the people that we can look at. Uh, those that come to church. Those that confess their corruption. All right? Those that contribute their cash. And those that clean up their character. And those that contend for the Christian faith. We have responsibilities and then God says, I'll bless. I'll bless. Uh, again, I believe with all my heart that uh, you go knock doors or you invite neighbors or you invite co-workers. They may not come. But God will see your effort and others will. <laughs> I mean, people that don't even get invited, they just come. Why? Because God's going to bless our effort. So if we want to build the church again... It's not all about competition. We're not trying to be a bigger church than another church. No, we're just supposed to try to do what God wants us to do. Uh, and so let's, let's do, live our lives like God can, or so God can bless us and bless our church. Let's have our every head bowed, every eye closed. Brother Derek's going to come, Miss Tiffany, and we'll have an invitation. If you just like to come pray for our church, let's all stand. I would love for you to do that. I'm going to be praying right here for our church so the Lord will bless it. But if the Lord spoke to your heart, if there's something you need to 
Change, add, do. Please do. make that your prayer wherever he leads I'll go and uh, uh, you know I want to be a part uh, of doing God's work and I know Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord and I'm sure he thought that was an awesome opportunity even though he didn't know what an ark was didn't know what was going on he just obeyed and Solomon same thing I'm sure he was excited about building the temple for the Lord and again all of us have that same commandment build my church and, uh, and so we can all be a part of it. So let's make sure we have the qualifications and be those type of people that can be counted on. And uh, we'll be dismissed. Brother Dave, if you'll dismiss us.